I'd like to invite Fartoon Aden to speak on behalf of all those that we have honored here today. When I saw the sign, President Obama signing against the violence against the women, it was, it was relief. I knew and I know we can change. We can change. And our program called Sister Somali, which that name it came from because it doesn't matter where we live, we're all sisters. And that's why I need a support to young generation to become leaders, to change, and not, we, we, say we have a lot of work to do. Education, healthy, basic life. We're talking about human rights, the basic life in Somali, and we don't have that. And that's the one of things that we are fighting for. And we wanted to keep fighting, and hopefully one day we will change, and the young generation is gonna get there. And thank you very much for having me here. I'm sorry I didn't read my speech, because... <laughs> My name is Fertun Aden. I came from Somalia, especially in Mogadishu. Um, I'm the director of El Mambis and Human Rights Center, and we work in Mogadishu and different, reg different regions in South and Central Somalia. My name is Elwad Elman, and I live and work in Mogadishu, Somalia, a country recently ranked as the second worst place in the world to be a woman. And this is because Somali women face several forms of gender-based violence. Forced in early marriage, almost universal female genital mutilation, rape, and other forms of sexual violence. Women from the internally displaced people's camps and the host community are systematically preyed upon. This is made worse by the vast number of small arms in civilian hands and a growing gang culture in some parts of the country. Acts of sexual violence usually go unpunished, and rapists are rarely tried or convicted. And even where justice is initiated, victims are not provided any form of protection, compensation, or recourse. Victims are treated like criminals, and those who dare seek justice are often retaliated against. In some cases, the rapists are even forced to marry their victims. My organization, Elman Peace and Human Rights Center, co-founded the, the first rape crisis center called Sister Somalia. It was born during the most insecure of times, where the terrorist group Al-Shabaab controlled much of the country. Rape massacres, sexual slavery, genital mutilation, female infanticide, death by stoning, dowry murders, marital enslavement, beheadings, indiscriminate killings, and human trafficking were daily occurrences, often committed publicly, always left unspoken, where fear superseded all. Mentioning the word rape, or providing services to survivors was so highly stigmatized, the only way to respond to the female suffering was through an underground network of support that Sister Somalia created. My name is Edna Aden, and I'm a midwife. And because I'm a midwife, I've come to talk to you about the health of women and children. My country, Somaliland, is a country with one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world a country that has known civil war, 82 to 91, uh, during which a quarter of a million of our people were lost and 95% of our cities destroyed. This, of course, is, was a situation that 
needed two things, either to turn away and say, I don't care, I don't feel, I don't know, I will just disappear into the horizon and go and settle somewhere in one of your great countries, or stand firm and try to do something about it. 60% of our people are nomads. I know how difficult it is to provide health care to people who are sedentary, but when they're nomads, it makes it even more difficult. When they're poor, when the country is so wide, it makes it very difficult. My message is to governments. My message is to governments to allocate more funds instead of spending money on tanks and guns and bazookas and, I don't know, military hardware. Spend more money on health, on education, on infrastructure, on water, on sanitation. So that is one education. The second is educate women, educate girls. When you educate a woman, she is able to take care of myself. I cannot imagine where I would have been if I had not had access to the education or the training that has helped me to help others. The defining problem of my generation blinds us, burns us, and it's easy to look away. But why raise a finger when we could join hands? Member states, rather than the interests of corporate lobbyists and money, let your definitive common ground guide your politics. We, the youth, your shared future, transcend borders, emphasize cooperation and mutual understanding. Corporations may have a responsibility to their shareholders, but they are a fraction of this world's population. Maureen, where do you live? I live in Mogadishu, and uh, my grandparents live in Ofgoy, so I'm in between the two. It's a village just outside Mogadishu, about an hour. And how does climate change affect Somalia? Several different ways. You did mention the cyclone, which was a pretty pertinent example, given it just happened a week ago. But in addition, there are two kind of key areas in Somalia that are um, a, have a lot of potential uh, in terms of economic growth for the entire country, which are agriculture and fishing. Um, of all the countries in Africa, Somalia has the longest coastal and um, ocean acidification is obviously wreaking havoc on biodiversity in all these communities. Many um, fishing towns rely on these uh, resources and have been spurred to kind of take up things like piracy as a result of having no place to turn, given that our government is not the most stable in the world, I guess, and is working to kind of uh, solidify itself after 22 years of civil war. Rolling. <laughs> Rolling. Oh my god! Ooh! And me! Delivering content. I just wet myself. <laughs>